Hello out there viewers, uh, Daniel back here again with some more ponderings on antinatalism and I would like to eventually say antinatalism and associated or tangential philosophies because if I just talk about antinatalism it's going to get, there's only so much you can say about this one topic. You know, we can explore all the, all the nooks and crannies but eventually we, we want to move on I think to other things as well that uh, other other sort of ethical dilemmas or moral questions that I think are associated and are very interesting. So I'd like to try to touch on a little bit of that today. Uh, before we get there, uh, a little bit about my approach to this channel. I, I haven't monetized it yet. Uh, I haven't been able to, but it looks like pretty soon I would be able to. I think I'm not going to do that, and I'll give you my reasons. If I monetized it and it became more popular, who knows whether it would, but if that was the case, it would be an income stream for me and I might become somewhat dependent on that. And if that happened, then I would be, I'm pretty sure that my content would, would be moderated to some degree by my desire to maintain subscribers, uh, to tell people in a sense what they want to hear, right? And I don't want to do that. I, I think it's great you, you all are listening and I really appreciate it. But I, I want to be able to change my mind or tell you what I think. And if you don't like it, that has to be okay. So I don't want to monetize the channel. Uh, I hope you're cool with that. If you are interested in supporting me, I do have a book that uh, is on uh, sort of ethical, ethical issues. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll post a link underneath the description here if you want to buy that book. It's on Amazon. Yeah, it's a good read. Uh, four and a half out of five stars, I think. So not bad for a, uh, a relatively short and I hope interesting book. Anyway, moving on. Antinatalism. Today I want to talk about antinatalism and artificial intelligence. This is going to become a bigger and bigger issue. Chat GPT as, as one aspect of, of what looks to be artificial intelligence becoming stronger and stronger and that will continue on. And, and so useful that, that there'll be a lot of investment in that kind of a technology. The concern, of course, the moral concern is at some point, it may not be now, but at some point, does artificial intelligence become sentient? Can it, can it feel? Can it suffer? Can it desire? I, I don't think that's the case at the moment, but it, it definitely could be in the future. So our question the question for for everybody involved and antinatalists in particular would be we are in a sense birthing a new intelligence by doing this by by not we i mean i don't know how to do it i'm pretty sure you don't know how to do it but there are folks out there that that are amazing at putting together this technology and, and creating what seems to be sentience so if we actually were able to create an artificial intelligence that can think and feel and suffer. Is it right? It's the same argument, of course, for antinatalism. Is it right to bring that intelligence into being? And it's a very difficult one to answer because we don't know for sure. We don't even know the markers of what it could mean if they're actually sentient, if they actually can feel, or whether they're the AIs are pretending to feel whether they're that's part of their programming so we don't know for sure but I want to take a moment and, and talk about the word artificial because I think this is almost a pejorative that's used artificial intelligence seems like it would be less than or less important than whatever non artificial intelligence would be something like biological or uh, evolved intelligence. So let's pick this apart a little bit. If I, and this is Alan Watts' great, uh, one of his great illustrations of artificiality. If I took a, like a, a fake, a, a plastic sunflower, you know, in the middle of it, and I started sticking leaves on it from the outside, and, I, and I, then it eventually it looks real, right? It kind of looks like a sunflower. We, we understand generally that's what we mean by artificial. It's, it, it's, it hasn't grown from within. It hasn't evolved and grown and blossomed in a biological way. 
with its own determination. It's constructed through bits and pieces from the outside in rather than from the inside out. So when we talk about computer or machine intelligence, maybe that's a better word than artificial is a machine intelligence. What we mean there is that we have constructed something that is is kind of we pieced it together rather than having it evolve organically. That's what we mean by artificial. But once that, however it's constructed, whether it's biological or whether it's through a, a different set of means, once that intelligence gains consciousness, if that's possible, if it gains sentience, let's say you have a computer that does nothing but answer your questions, but it's intelligent, it's alive, it's sentient, and it notices the, the gaps between your interaction with it, and it suffers boredom and uh, anxiety, will they ask another question? You know, in the same way, if you have a, a poodle or something at home and you go to work all day, that little animal is waiting for you to come back. And of course, when we come back, the poodle is so excited to see us because it's been bored of it out of its mind all day. And we feel good because it feels like, you know, a loving response from an animal to see us. They, they expect us and they await our return. But is it the right thing to do? And I'm going to make another video later on vegan antinatalism. And we'll try to explore that. But it's the same kind of an idea. This artificial intelligence may be in a, in a state in which it's expecting interaction and it may suffer uh, without that interaction. And if that was the case, the question is putting aside the utility of having artificial intelligence, because of course there's great utility for us. But the moral question is, is it right to birth this intelligence into the world uh, if we know what's going to suffer? Okay, so hold on to your seats here, theists, believers in, in gods, because this is going to make you uncomfortable. So if we agree that, okay, maybe it's wrong, maybe it's wrong to bring into the world uh, a being that can suffer, uh, it, we just, this is not something that we want to pursue. We, would, we should stop the research if we know that's going to happen. We can find other tools that we can use that are not going to become self-aware and sentient and suffer. If we, as a, as a global society, as a planet, as a species, if we decided to halt the, the uh, inquisition, inquisition, the inquiry <laughs> into this kind of intelligence through a desire to reduce suffering, we would have done better than the apparent God that created us, right? Those of you that believe that a God created human beings and we know that human beings can suffer, well, this God created beings that can definitely suffer. So if we as a human species decide not to do the same thing again, we're doing better than the gods we created. So that's something to think about. I think I'll end this one here. I don't want to keep it super long. Um, of course, I always welcome your comments. Thanks for watching. I've got more to come, so stay tuned.